These are a bunch of team compositions and pals that are truly powerful in pal world. And in this video, I'm going to go over them for everyone that needs more power and fun as the product of using synergies in this game. Whether it's for combat purposes, by the way, or for having just very useful workers for your base to get a lot of those juicy materials. You definitely want to get them. Starting off with the number one pal and team maker on the list, probably one of the most broken pals in the game, and you can get it at the start, the Daydream. <laughs> The Daydream is absolutely amazing in PAL World thanks to its very broken skill, Dream Chaser, and this ability breaks the start, the early game, the mid game, parts of your adventure like it's nothing, especially because you can get a bunch of these pals very easily and very quickly. Thanks to the Daydream's partner skill, Dream Chaser, it will fight with you even if you don't summon these Daydreams, so that means after getting its scholar, you can run 4 or 5 of them in conjunction and they will all stick to you and absolutely annihilate everything. This is Team Daydream, or Team Daydream with a little flame on top of it, and I like to use 4 of them and then a blaster type of pal as the pal you want to summon for maximum damage. Early on something like Fox Park is absolutely amazing because you can get its partner skill very easily and is unlocked very early on, which in turn makes you able to use your Fox Sparks as a flamethrower. And for those that have tried this absolutely busted skill, you know that it can eviscerate entire camps and dungeons in mere seconds. Fox Sparks then in itself does deserves a mention because this thing is an early game carry. Its range attacks aside from the flamethrower in combination with your daydreams range attacks in combination with your own range attacks is an extremely powerful setup that will completely destroy a lot of encounters. However, if you don't want to mix the darkness with the brightness of the flame then Team Dark is a good alternative. Tombat is your choice of summon here who creates for the dark knowledge and 3 daydreams to top it all off. The daydreams destroy everything passively for you, while Tombat has a variety of useful attacks in itself as your main summon and who Kratos is just there for the coolness and buffs all your daydreams and your Tombat as it buffs all your dark pals, which in this case are all 5 pals in the party. It's yet again a lot of power, you sometimes have to be careful because with multiple daydreams out you will one shot a lot of pals, so if you're trying to capture a new pal keep that in mind, but at the same time it's a great setup for catching pals as this setup exerts a lot of pressure while you throw your balls. You can get a lot of these spells very early on as well however if you are very 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 early on and you don't have anything yet then you might want to go with team i don't know what i'm doing yet for Catavas and a Fox Sparks. See, Catava has that beautiful passive of giving your team extra weight capacity, and these Catavas are everywhere. So it's basically just a quick plus 200 weight capacity for nothing, and Fox Sparks, again, is an early game carry that you can then use as your main summon to destroy everything. While you then use your extra weight capacity to make progression easier by giving you more materials and items at once to progress your base, load out, and just level up without getting stuck in place because you're exceeding the weight capacity all the time. Now, Kativas, or however you say, Daydreams and Tombats are all excellent base workers as well, as they have a bunch of skills. So, that's another thing going for all these spells that I've mentioned so far, and pre-obtaining the color for Daydream, you are very well off using him as a worker in your base. By the way, we also need a moment to talk about Broccoli. No, not the vegetable, but something better. Indifferent Broccoli Server Hosting. Thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. Use my link and you can immediately check them out and get two days trial for free. Free. Yes, and if you have any problems, their customer support have no lives whatsoever, so you'll quickly get help. Also, they use quality hardware to host fast servers. Not the shady aftermarket stuff, you won't get scammed, don't worry. If you get a bad experience, I will personally visit them and nuke their headquarters with my army of daydreams. Use my exclusive link and you know what to do. Okay, let's continue with the video. But if you have progressed a bit, then you will also want to have a mount and Nightwing comes into play here. You can get this one very early, you want to go to the first boss battle area and you want to go out of your way to get it. Nightwing is amazing and can on itself carry entire parts of the early game for you, it's your early game flying mount. The tornado attack is bonkers and makes you able to defeat enemies much higher level and then Nightwing also has a variety of ranged attacks in combination with just giving you the utility to fly everywhere and transport yourself with ease and speed, making it a monster pick. It fits in any team composition or no team at all if you want to go team I'm an independent whammon. 
But while Nightwing is great and all, you do want to keep upgrading your flying mounts for say Van Verne when you get to the 20s and Valoris when you get to the 30s. Reason being is that the higher level flying mounts will generally be faster as well or have some additional stuff that is useful. On the contrary to a flying mount, you also want to have a ground mount to ride on the ground for navigating different types of terrain. Things like Dire Hall is a great option there for an early game mount. However, the deer is great too and it gives you that juicy lumbering bonus as well but the deers in the game have that on a short delay charging type of ability which helps a lot with moving around making this ability a great way to abuse it to get extra movement traits to look out for your mounts are always going to be swift and runner so your mounts become even faster now why am I mentioning mounts? Well, logically, a great all-round team then can also exist out of a flying mount, a ground mount, and three daydreams, or a mix between daydreams and other powerful offensive spells, like the Pangulet, which can CC bosses and is obtained very easily, which you can then also transform in a rocket launcher with the skill that is unlocked very early on as well for a nice early game nuke. But the Pangkang, the not evolution of the Pangulet, is even better. CC. Fox Sparks Flamethrower, but now the chill version of it that can AOE nuke enemies and it does it on itself and the ability to reach very difficult spots is amazing. Pankang is an absolutely great pal, not just for its combat purposes by the way, but in your base as well as the Pankang has a bunch of level 2 skills, making it a very good pal that is still obtained relatively early on as well. What you also want in your base is Vixies, a lot of them, especially early on, get as many Vixies for team, I want to level up as fast as possible and put them in your range. The more, the better. These spells generate a bunch of spheres and other useful loot and every time you come back from an adventure you will find an entire range filled with spheres. Look at this juicy loot, with these spheres you can then catch, <clears throat> collect a bunch of pals and collecting pals is one of the best way to get XP, if not the best way to level up. Especially Especially if you get a bunch of them as you get those streaks for bonus XP. But okay, let's leave our base again and go back to Pankang. This spell is cute and devastating, look at that nuclear attack. But did you also know that you can boost your main summon quite easily by using those spells that buff a certain type of spell depending on their elemental background. For example, in the case of Pankang being a water ice type of spell, that then means if you collect 4 Kelpsies, the water spell buffing spell that you can find in the waters, which with their partner skill water spout will increase the attack power of water pals and this stack so if you run four of them our pancake gets a huge boost to its attack power it is also visualized in the menu as you can see then would you look at that, Panking is now even more of a king than before and can trivialize bosses so low, so low, but I hear you, no mount might make things a bit unpractical. So one Panking, three Kelpsies and a mount of your choice it is, alternatively obviously, if you need movement. You can also make your mount, your main summon and then buff it with four of these type of pals like Team Sweepsy is all about. In the case of Sweepsy, however, this spell has its entourage of bodyguard-esque type of spells known as Sweeps, which only buff Sweepsy specifically thanks to their partner skill Fluffy. So you would go for Sweep Sweep and 4 Sweeps and you will get a whopping plus 48% boost to your Sweep C. Not just for its attack but also its defense. And Sweep C is a mount as well so you can ride it and enjoy those huge bonuses and completely destroy enemies with it like it's nothing and it's also a very beefy tanky pal. But while Sweep C is cool and all, there's another pal that ventures forth upon this idea and that is Elizabeth. Elizabeth has its own bodyguard pal known as B Guard, and B Guard does exactly for Elizabeth as what Swees do for Sweep C, namely buffing Elizabeth and only Elizabeth. This is thanks to the Queen B command partner skill, and arguably with Elizabeth, it's even much better considering she has better attacks and stats than Sweep C for the trade off of not being able to ride her, and gets again that beautiful plus 48% bonus to her stats thanks to the B Guards in the party. Now be careful because catching these bee guards is a dangerous endeavor in itself as they can blow up in your face making them go from 100 to 0 real quick and you as well by the way. But it's worth it because after you get 4 of them you can then make team Elizabeth. 
where you would run Elizabeth and then four B guards. Elizabeth in this setup can trivialize bosses solo easily. Elizabeth crowd controls them and deals a bunch of damage from a distance as well as up front and just in general Elizabeth does powerful things. And as you can see I don't even have to do anything. I can grab some popcorn and watch the show and Elizabeth will take care of any boss really. That's already with the plus 48% bonus but if you consider passives as well and take those into accounting you can really spiral the damage out of control for your main summon in these type of setups. Setups. Traits you then want to look out for would be things that boost your attack even more, like Brave, Ferocious or say Muscle Head. Especially for Elizabeth and Sweep C, this can be a very potent thing to do as they have their specific supporting pal, which gives them a 48% bonus compared to a regular buffing setup with a main summon buff thanks to its elemental background, in which it can only reach up to 40%. Still very good, don't get me wrong, but either way it works for both type of setups and the damage can get bonkers really quick quickly if you optimize for it as much as possible with things like farming the right passives and combining those passives and getting the right combinations of set passives. While these types of setups are fun and all, I hear you thinking. I want more pals out in the open attacking while I'm attacking with my main summon and I have good news for you because Daydream isn't the only caller pal in the game. No, meet Dazzy. While Dazzy is in the higher level zones, you can definitely go out of your way to get them earlier if you want to embark on an ambitious adventure and catch them as you can actually get its necklace at only level 22. Dazzy is going to set up Team Lightning for us, an insane team that I invented on the spot, but yeah, this one is greatness. It consists out of one Rayhound, one Sparkit and three Dazzies. The Dazzies have an ability when out like this that will strike a certain spot on the battlefield and nuke whatever the Lightning Bolt hits, especially if you combine three of them as you get multiple hits at the same spot and this is very good versus bosses since bosses are bigger and tend to stay in the same spot and then spark it is going to function as the lightning version of kelpsy in the sense that it boosts your lightning pulse attacks instead so it boosts all the three dashies in our team but also our main summon the ray hound and the ray hound is just amazing versus bosses it does its thing if you don't want to ride him or her it has a variety of powerful lightning attacks both from a distance and up close that when combined with your Dazzy's lightning bolt will melt any hostile entity really. The synergy between these pals is amazing. But the main selling point with Rayhound in my opinion is that it's a fast based ground mount as well that you can ride and thus use its attacks like death but it has the ability to double jump as well. This gives you great combat possibilities like from a kiting perspective you can just keep double jumping all the time basically since the Rayhound has good stamina management and kill any boss you're fighting while kiting for a very safe clear. Want to go for that double jump pump with a shotgun combo wombo while striking with lightning? It works very well. And while you're doing that with your Rayhound, your Dazzies are still doing that thing and also nuking the enemy with their lightning bolts and all of that is then amplified by our spark. Team Lightning is really good, great for many different scenarios. If you can't get Rayhound yet however because he or she is too high level for you, you can then also make this with a Univolt in Instead. Same team, but swap out the Rayhound for Univolt for the very original team name, Team Univolt, which is also a lightning based mount that you can get actually very early on and is also fast for riding. Its lightning attacks then also get boosted. But what Univolt has that is specifically nice is that it gives your attacks, so with your guns, lightning damage as well. So you can ride, pump these sick lightning shots out while your Dazzies also strike your enemies with lightning bolt. Univolt is really just like everybody's favorite pal, Chilette, another riding mount which does the same thing but with adding dragon power instead to your shots and is potentially another way to make a dragon based team for example. If you like the idea of giving your shots and ammo a certain elemental damage then the time has finally arrived. To meet Team Fire, also known as Team Obliteration, also known as Team Nuclear Fallout, also known as Team Hell has gotten a hole inside of it and it's raining fire everywhere now for the ultimate burst in your shots. Yes, we're going there. You can make a fire-based team with Fox Sparks, definitely, but since we already covered that and we have also covered a ground mount-based synergistic team, let's go for that main summon is a flying mount-centric fire team. One word, Ragnarok. The wordplay in the name already indicates that this guy is a pumper. Scary hours right here. For my fire team, we then combine Ragnarok with three Kelpsy Ignis 
and a Guffin Ignis. You should be familiar with Kelpsy now, this is the fire variation that will buff your fire pals attack power. So our Regna Hawk and then Guffin Ignis will boost our own attack specifically, which in turn is going to be buffed through Regna Hawk as well, since Regna Hawk gives us that fire damage to our shots with its flame wing partner skill as you can see, and accordingly your damage output when shooting while riding Regna Hawk is going to be insane. You will start setting your enemies on fire while loading all your enhanced bullets inside of them for very quick kills, whether it's versus mobs or versus bosses. So your own shots are covered through Regna Hawk and Godfin Ignis. Ragnarok itself also has a bunch of great fire-based attacks, whether you're riding or throwing Ragnarok out as a summon on itself, all of those attacks are getting boosted by our three Kelpsies, let me add to that, significantly getting boosted. Attacks like the Flame Tornadoes or the Flamethrower as type of abilities or just ranged fire attacks, great stuff all around for this fire pal. Ragnarok is also great for dungeons as he's tiny enough to go through a lot of the more narrow openings for a flying mount, which is that a bonus considering you can already clear dungeons so fast with this party composition. All around the fire team is great, gives you insane damage and burst and gives you great mobility with the main summon being a flying mount so it has everything really. Keeping the types of elemental damage in mind is very important as you can use certain teams or pals to abuse your enemy's weaknesses. The chart released by the developers themselves gives you a good overview of how it works. Whatever is pointed at gets necked by what is preceding the arrow and thus will be extra super effective against whatever the arrow is pointing at. And for the very sharp individuals among us, you would have noticed by now that we have covered pretty much all these elementals through various themes and synergies in this video. Whether it was Team Fire, Team Lightning, Team Grass through Elizabeth, Team Ice through Sweepia, Team Water with Panking or Team Dark, we have covered it all really. And if you want to abuse this mechanic versus harder encounters like bosses, of which you can infer their elemental type quite easily by just looking above their HP bar, then that's strategically obviously a very smart thing to do to make your damage output as high as possible. The only team left that wasn't mentioned is the team that consists out of people subscribed to me and this channel, so make sure to join that team by clicking that subscribe button. You don't want to be left out now, do you?